mix the real world of psychic research and make a good old-fashioned ghost comedy. Hi and welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Keith Isles and I'm standing in as host for Claire and Anthony Bueno because tonight is their night. The sibling filmmakers are here at the BFI IMAX for the UK premiere of Cleaning Up the Town, Remembering Ghostbusters. I think we fully believed that we were going to carve out a little niche in film history. And I just got this wonderful shiver down my back that I was about to do something special. Nothing else like it. It's funny and fresh. Claire, congratulations. Amazing to be here for your big night. My first question before it's anything to do with the film at all is I want to ask you, you're normally stood on this side of the line, how does it feel to be stood over there? Terrifying. <laughs> um, yeah, I, th I would... I think I'm probably more comfortable where you are because I'm normally kind of in control of the questions and I I know what's coming. Um, and uh, being over here, it makes you feel kind of really nervous. You're on the spot and you just want to do a good job and uh, represent yourself properly. Um, but um, it's, it's a, we've been here on a 12-year journey. We're here at the IMAX and, um, and I'm really excited to be here and promote the film that we've loved and laboured over for such a long period of time. So, uh, but I'll be back on that side soon enough. <laughs> well, you never know, you never know. And um, obviously, like you said, this has been quite the epic journey. Um, what would you say, and it's probably hard to, to answer, but would, was the highlight of the entire experience? God, getting it finished um, and knowing that we'd locked and, um, and, and the incredible learning curve that we've been on. This has been an independently um, produced film and so um, the self kind of growth that you know that I've had knowing what I know now and what I'll do another time you know another time um, I've definitely learned that the highlights as well have been some of the people that we've met I mean you know we've grown up listening to stories that my nan and my aunt used to say when we were kids so we always loved listening to these these stories and so for us to be able to sit in front of these kind of hollywood icons and legends and for them to bestow the honor of them sharing their stories with us has been incredible we've got to travel around the united states as well and we've just met some wonderful people and the documentary because of the long periods of time that it took it's actually brought a lot of people that had worked together, lost touch, and brought them back together as well. So there's been so many highlights. I can't pick just one, but um, but definitely kind of like meeting Harold Ramis and him being such a, an incredibly nice man and genuine um, was just a, such a privilege. And Ernie Hudson, who we can now call a friend, who's been a stalwart support. Um, so it's hard to choose one highlight because there's been so many. <laughs> No, I totally appreciate that. And and in terms of the project from way back when you originally conceived it to where it is now, what would you say is the biggest change that it's gone through? Oh, that's a really good question. What's the biggest change that it's gone through? I think probably the, the I would probably think the, the, the actual kind of arc of the story, we had written it a certain way, and then I keep looking at Mike because we've worked together for such a long time. <laughs> um, you said uh, trajectory of the. What, what was the? Sorry, ask me again. Sorry, I was. It was about how from the original conception of the project and what you wanted to achieve from it to where you've come. You know, did anything major change in in the way you've delivered it to what you originally imagined? I think I think that the human interest story. And so there was a lot of, um, you know, the technical stuff that we wanted to ask. But as we were going through interview after interview, particularly with the effects guys, there was this story that just kept coming through that was, the, you know, they had to... The, post-production was cut short by six months compared to other films so they had to achieve so much in such a little amount of time and that to be honest from from talking to all the guys was basically the kind of the prominent thread that um, that was that, that basically changed kind of the the arc of the story really and really helped ground it and give it like I say that human interest story really wonderful Claire and uh, I will ask uh, what's next for you 
too hot to handle remembering Ghostbusters 2. We are in production, uh, post-production with that Derek, who can't be with us tonight, who's done an amazing job of the motion graphics that we'll see this evening. Um, he's working um, on those as we speak. So um, I can't give you a date, but, but it is being worked on. So the assembly's done. It's just the, it's just the post-production now. It drove me out of my mind. I'm like, seven full scale before you're going to say this is enough? At some point, we've got to actually make it. I think the original of the cat was a little better. Like so many Americans, he got too big. But you know, there were these big mass of rubber. <laughs> and there were layers and layers of foam, which when people were exhausted, they would go and sleep on. Sometimes you'll see my assistants like this. <laughs> What I've got to ask though, as a lifelong fan of Ghostbusters, ever since you were a child, how does it feel for you now to be officially part of that world? Um, it's, it's a little bit surreal that after, yeah, after all these years and lots of kind of what ifs, and like, oh, what if we do this, what if we do that, what if we can get it in a cinema? Which was actually more Claire. More Claire was like, no, we'll get a cinema release out of the audience. I was like, I don't know about that. DVD as it was back then, because I don't think Blu-ray existed when we started this. I think many things didn't exist when we started this. There's children alive these days that didn't exist. Anyway, I'll cut that out later in the edit. Um, but it was, it's, it's very surreal to kind of like be here and it being celebrated in the way that it, it, it currently is right now. It's kind of, it's, yeah, a bit nerve-wracking. You can tell me hands are starting to do that. But well, there you go. I mean, you got it not only on the big screen, but probably on the biggest screen. I, I yes. I mean, that was. I yeah. I. I you know, this, this, it's just to think we're in the IMAX. I, mean, like, I think I used to dream about coming to the IMAX, like when when I found out they existed, and and coming to seeing Tron Legacy here and things like that. And and so with the fact that we're here with with all of these people that are like big fans of the film. Of Ghostbusters, that is. Um, we'll find out if they're going to be fans of this or not. That's still yet to come. But it's really surreal, but it's really exciting that everyone has kind of come together the, the way that they have done. And and we're in the IMAX, which is just, every time I say it, it's like, this is bizarre. But it's just, it's fantastic. And really, you know, the BFI for kind of like having faith in us like that to, to kind of put the film on their, you know, biggest screen that they've got in the country, I believe it is. So it's, it's, it's a very nice feeling. Well, this has obviously been a labor of love for you, but obviously in this world we now live in of uh, CG and digital technology and CGI effects and all this, how does it feel to have kind of almost mirrored the labor of love that went through this film with their practical special effects back in the day? Yeah, I mean, it's, well, they, I mean to their credit, they did, they did a film in a year where it took us 12 of those. But there was certainly what through making it there was like there's still that you want you're still trying to pour that same kind of passion in and there was because there are points over the years where you sort of like think i don't know do we just kind of do we just push it to one side because this is never ever 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 going to get finished but then you think about all those people we've interviewed and their time that they've given us and some of which have passed away and it's like it doesn't it's no longer kind of like a just a personal project it's like oh well we've got to get something done it becomes something that you want to honor them because they gave their time for nothing to tell this story to hopefully be seen in a documentary because a lot of them even if they have been interviewed before were never actually seen on because sometimes people get cut out of things and we were adamant about making sure everyone got put in this so it's it's always been about paying res respect to those people and not in a kind of corny cheesy kind of way but just showing that kind of personality that went into making ghostbusters and trying to put the same kind of love and care in that and something like Derek who kind of did all the motion graphics certainly kind of captured that he did a great job of bringing that all into it as well and as a uh, both a Ghostbusters fan but also a filmmaker what have you Anthony Bueno learned about yourself on this 12 year journey oh. um, I, I actually Endure, I can endure things much more than I thought I could have done because, uh, yeah, there, there has been times when it's been testing. But I, oh, that's a really good question. I actually think that is, it's like that, that kind of endurance thing because you can so easily abandon things and we just stuck it out really through some very difficult times. Some of it's been fantastic and really good fun, but it has been really hard doing all of that kind of stuff. On even recently, but that's another story. That's another documentary. Um, 
But I, yeah, I would say that. And that actually can work with Claire uh, without having to kill her uh, as much as I thought I would. I think that's probably the thing I've learned the most. <laughs> We only have one automobile. I think you just fix the car enough to just do this. We need to get this shot, get it running for this. This is New York. Who's just got a lot of money? Why don't I get me a Terador? Oh my God, am I going to have another John Candy conversation? There's no life like making movies. Who are these Ghostbusters? I mean, come on.